Welcome to the Houdini Hulai Challenge series. So Side Effects is holding a 31 day challenge where artists create a piece per day based on a daily topic. I've decided to take on the challenge and record each day's work so that you can see the process. I'm doing this so that I can challenge myself and I'd recommend that you do the same. So let's get straight into it. Yo, so week three has just begun. Week three is animals. Uh, this one I'm quite looking forward to. Uh, it seems like there can be a lot of fun ideas with this one. Um, also, sorry, I'm recording this kind of late. I'm actually recording this after I found out that I've even won the fur one. So I'm going to show you a time lapse and a walkthrough. Um, basically, last two days, quite stressful. I had to do squash and stretch, and then there was load shedding, so I had to render it during the day. So I started fur on another PC, brought over my setup, and I had to recreate it so that I could record it and show you. It basically just got really messy. At the time of recording, I've even finished slime as well. Uh, I just haven't recorded anything. My time management hasn't been amazing. Anyways, let's get straight into the time lapse, and then I'll take you through the setup. So this is after I have finished the setup. And so this started with making some bunny geometry. I actually had a discussion with my brother, um, firstly because I needed his advice on how to do fur. He tends to do animation, rigging, um, and fur, things like that. Mostly things related to characters. And so I needed him to explain like how fur works, because I don't really work with fur. Well, I know the basics, but we were basically trying to figure out which animal has the simplest shapes but packs the most cute factor so like cute to complexity ratio is what we're trying to figure out we need a we needed a high ratio there and we figured bunnies like rabbits are when they when they're sitting they're basically just a ball they're a sphere in the front a sphere at the back and then a little sphere for a tail and then all you have to do is make some ears with curves and so i decided to do a bunny what you do is you start with his body, you do a bit of an edit and a remesh, you boolean that with a head, um, you basically just sculpt to push in the eyes. Then over here you make this curve with the ear, and you do that three times, scaling it down slightly so that when you merge them together you can skin them and create that sort of shape. And then you can poly extrude it so that you know you end up with an ear. Once you have that you can transform it down and mirror it over so you have two ears. Then this is just the tail, 
<laughs> it's just a, it's just a sphere once again. Over on the side, it's it's bunny toes, but I ended up not using them. You can see that he has toes. At the end of it, I realized, you know, you probably won't even see that. So what happened was at the retopologizing stage, I just kind of ignored his toes. The PB from polygons, VDB convert, just so that you have it merged as one. Um, unnecessary merge node, just chilling there. Then you topo build, so you retopologize the bunny. Poly extrude his ear, reverse the ear geometry, because um, the poly extrude went the wrong way. Anyways, poly extrude the base of the ear, so you have that. Poly draw to close it off. Reverse these edges over here, you can see that they're flipped. Make an edit to the eye. Um, another poly draw just to correct some edges. Right, adding an edge loop to the eye from the tail. And then poly extrude out a nose. Poly draw so that you can flatten the nose. And these are just like minor edits. Just trying to get him to look more like a bunny. And add reference images up. I'll, I'll show you a picture of the reference image. Anyways, poly extrude the eye so that you end up with this sort of um, eye... Not eyelid, but basically just like the eye socket kind of thing. And then you subdivide. At this point, I noticed that his eye was too far forward compared to the reference image. Um, and having the eye further back seems to make him cuter. So pull it back a bit. Polyfall to close up the eye, VDB from polygons. This gets used for your fur. So when you're working with fur, and take everything that I say about fur with a pinch of salt, because I'm by no means an expert in this field. I just messed around until I had something that looked good. So things probably aren't very efficient or anything. VDB from polygons, you end up with a bunny. Um, you use this as basically a collision guide. You know how dynamics networks generate a VDB when you use a static object? Basically, you provide it when you're working with, with hair. So with fur, you provide the VDB. Anyways, create some eyes, merge it over, end up with this. Other side, don't look at the other side. The other side is terrifying <laughs> because um, some edits I did only after the fact. I only did it after he was already mirrored. And so I only did the edit to the one side. Anyways, you end up with the bunny, uh, full bunny, up with the geo and the eyes. And then you have to set your display flag on this because it gets passed into the fur groups. Okay, so I'm just going to disable all of the fur. I'm going to show you, probably not going to show you whiskers, it's, it's just this at a more basic level. So bunny fur, you bring in the bunny, you attribute paint a length. You want to paint basically long fur everywhere except by the eyes. So that's exactly what I do. Red is just full length, infrared, so purple is a zero value. Then you create your guides, right? So you use this guide initialization. You can choose wind amount and a direction. So you choose this direction so that it pushes from the front to the back. Also, this is based on the density up over here. So this just has a density of 50. And then you can go inside, guide initialize, and then you process, you set the length using that length attribute that we painted. So you go to operation, set length, and then you choose the length attribute. Guide groom, you're basically just pushing around the fur. you trying to get it to an interesting shape. You're doing things like adjusting length, um, fluffing it up in certain areas. So you can see you have different options here. So surface brush is generally what you'll use to shape it, but the wind does a good job mostly. You lift a lot of areas and you smooth some areas. You end up with this. This guide partition, I, <laughs> I don't know how it really works. I think I got it to work. This bend mask, it's here, but it's not used right now. It's used later. Um, not sure why it's even like over here. It should be further down, but anyways. Draw some curves. Those curves are kind of like, if you imagine a hairstyle, this would be trying to create a side path, right? You're creating a line which separates the, the hair. So you use that in the guide partition. And I think it works because if you disable this and check the fur in the head, it looks different depending on whether it's enabled or not, but I don't know, I think it works. So you create the bunny body fur and the head fur. So I'm gonna show you the body fur first. Basically you create an attribute. So the attributes over here, um, you paint it on just like you do with the length. So right over there, you can just paint it. And then you just use a density for the amount of fur. So this is fur per guide. So this gives you guides over here, this um, guide groom. And then this gives you actual fur. All right, so this is where you do most of the, the actual fur look. This is where you basically define the shape of the fur. So over here, you just generate this. Um, I want to show you influence radius because this is something that was important for making the bunny look right. And then you can see in the time lapse, the bunny has like little chunks of fur. That's because of in, um, influence radius. Basically, how large of an area around a guide curve can hair be generated in? So if you drop this, you'll see that his hair gets like thinner and closer together. And that's an issue that 
you see a lot with people when they do fur simulations is that the hair's too clumped together. So they have firstly too few guides and then too low of an influence rate. So you want that kind of high. And then in here, once again, you guide process. So this is where that bend comes in. This is what I was saying, it's a bit messy. Like this should have been, the bend should have been in here. You use this to basically just bend the fur. It bends the edges of the fur. So if you switch this off, you'll see a lot of the fur just sort of goes um, back down to flat. And I'll show you what that mask looks like. You can see that you want all of the fur over on the side to have a bend to it. So you take this, switch it off. None of the fur bends towards the edges. So it gives it that nice curl up towards the end. So it starts out in line with the body and curls up. So that's pretty cool. We can choose the angle over here. So if you want it further up or closer in line with the body, anything lower makes him look shocked and anything higher makes him look like a perfectly groomed gentleman bunny. So as you can see, what happens is your bunny ends up with these weird clumps and it's very sort of flat. So you put that into a set length where you want to kind of get a uniform length with some variation. So you just set up a set length with a min and max and a bit of a randomization. So then you clump the hair together um, and this is based on the clump mask over here. So hair clumps together and yeah, I was messing around with the frizz. Um, turns out he didn't really need it. It made him look a little bit wild. So didn't use frizz. Then that's the body done. Then you go over to the head. Um, same thing when it comes to drawing it in. You kind of just you just use this um, density attribute and you paint it on. And then once again, higher influence radius so that it doesn't look too clumped. Then you have this attribute paint. It's the same clump mask as the other one. It's just used again over here. Once again, like I said, it would have been a lot neater to move that into the um, hair groom, into the guide groom. But, you know, it's fine. So then hair clump it clumps up the fur a bit. You can see it's very smooth and then that makes it clump. Then you have another guide process for bending like you did earlier. It just bends up the fur towards the neck area. It gives him that nice sort of fluffy look and a distinction between the head fur and the body fur. And I'll show you the fur without the geometry. So I'll separate the geometry over here. I'll show you all of that now. Um, I just want to show you without the geometry so that you can see the fur. Redshift, open render view. Right, so as you can see, it's not an amazingly high resolution fur simulation. And, and so that means that when you put in the body for the rabbit and then you render this, you got to make sure that the body color is very similar to the fur color. And that's just me not being great with the um, fur full. Uh, you should probably fill it up a bit better and maybe even have a base layer of fur. But I think this is an okay workaround. I don't know what the actual workflow for fur is. So that bump around the eyes and by the nose is just procedural because I knew the bunny wouldn't move. So it can just be based on position. So I'll show you over here. Material, you just use a max on noise with a very low scale. And I'll show you what that looks like. It's a little bit disturbing. You can see bunny's not as cute as he, um, as he usually is. But this bump around the eyes is different and it's driven by an eyelid um, attribute that I paint on. So I'll show you that. In the bunny body, you paint on an attribute. I also changed the, the eye a bit because he was looking a little bit angry. So I just lifted the eye a bit, make him just, I don't know, adds cute factor. Cute factor is, is immeasurable. I don't, there's no quantifiable way to measure how cute this is. So if I'm moving the eye, I'm not moving it up by like 0.2 cuteness points. I'm just guessing. And if it looks better, then cool. You paint on that eyelid attribute and you can see it over there. And then you use it in the shader so that that area has a different noise pattern. Bunny nose. <laughs> it's kind of cute, actually. So the bunny comes in. I draw on some curves onto his nose. This one is the main curve and there's a second nostril curve. Merge them together, resample it, use uh, curve U over here in these attribute wrangles to drive P scale so that it's narrower towards the points. Fuse it together, resample attribute blur to smooth it, polywire, and then you end up with that. So you clip it, mirror it, VDB it, smooth it, convert it. But it does not end up with this little nose. And then that just has like a, a pink shader on it. Um, the eye, I think it's just a reflective material. So it's a super glossy, funny eyes. Um, it used to have a coat. I was messing around with all of those things. But in the end, it actually just looked best when it was diffused with a very low roughness on reflection but yeah his eyes are, are 
pretty basic. So you end up with this. All right, so now he's, he's starting to get kind of cute. The only other thing was the cloth. Um, it was kind of fun simulating the cloth because what I did was I made a grid and remeshed it, right? So you end up with this. Gave it some velocity noise so that it moves around in a weird way. And then I moved it up like this, right? So I also created a ground plane from my background geometry and merged it with the bunny, but the bunny transforms over time. So he comes flying down. What that allows is when you put it into the vellum cloth and your cloth falls, because my bunny's keyframed, as you can see, he attacks the cloth. He comes flying in and he lands on the cloth. Poof, just like that. Why that's useful is because you can post process it and time shift it to a certain frame. So you can just choose whichever frame. I found that 99 looked best. And you can just have him actually sitting on the cloth and interacting with it, which is nice. Um, I just do an auto UV and then file cache that cloth out. So that's the cloth that I end up with. Bunny just sits on the cloth like that. Um, and then I have a material for the cloth. It is a texture that comes in. Um, it's black and white, so I ramp it. What's red and white, so I ramp it from pink to cream. And then I also use that same material and use it to affect displacement. So you can see, so you can see that there's a bit of a bump along those edges. It's also a bump over there. That's displacement. So it is actually displacing. So it just makes the cloth look a bit more realistic. And so then you just do the whiskers and you end up with all of this. That's the body geo. Um, oh, and then the fur, you can make it whatever color you want. It is black. Mostly because I needed to hide imperfections, so don't tell anyone. But you can make him like blue or yellow. You could be like Pikachu, um, which is kind of fun. See Pikachu. So you could you could if you wanted to. Um, you give him like black black tips on the ears and like red cheeks. Actually, um, because this file is attached and you can check it out, if you want to, you could redo this render. If you have Redshift, um, you could re-render this bunny as Pikachu. Put it up on Instagram. I would I would be upset or anything. I'm not going to sue you. I'm putting the files out there so you can do whatever you want with them. But yeah, just make changes to it. Don't just re-render the bunny that I made it and claim that one. Make it your own, you know, but it's, it's cool if you want to do that. So I didn't do an animation for this one um, just because I didn't know what I was doing, so I didn't want to still have to worry about first simulation and all of that. I wanted to kind of make his nose twitch and have his fur blow a little bit in the wind, very subtle animation, but that didn't happen. So I just rendered a 4K image and the final render looks like this. So yeah, that's it for this video. Um, sorry, I couldn't give you more tips with this one. I, I don't want to give you bad practices because this was me not knowing how to really do fur i knew about guides and you know how to change the shape of the fur i've seen this done before but i'm but i'm no pro so yeah feel free to mess around with this thanks for watching hope you enjoyed this one and uh, this one won so that's pretty cool um that's two wins and one third place i think something like that i figured i should probably do a tutorial for all of the weekly votes but also maybe for all of the ones that win. So there'll probably be a tutorial for all of the ones that win at the end of this. So thanks for watching. I'll see you a bit later or tomorrow with um, Slime. Slime was fun. So I'll show you that one. Um, yeah, bye.